from the Evening Standard in London. I'm David Marsland, and this is The Leader. The charge is treason. How do you plead? Not guilty. In Channel 5's new series, Anne Boleyn is as defiant as ever, but in a boom time for revisionism of Henry VIII's doomed second wife, you have to do some things differently. This three-parter has cast Jodie Turner-Smith in the lead role, and that's caused a collective gasp in some galleries because Miss Turner-Smith is black. Fear can be fuel. Let your fear drive you to be bigger, louder. The sky itself will not limit you. Period dramas traditionally have had limited roles for anyone not white, but that's been changing recently. Everyone talks about Bridgerton, but there's also The Great, which had black and Asian actors in high society 18th century Russia. Theatre's already been through this, one of the more high-profile examples being a black actor in the role of Hermione Granger in The Cast Child. But there is a difference here. Anne Boleyn was a real person. Can colourblind casting, or identity-conscious casting, as the producers of Anne Boleyn say it is, work with historical characters? Our Arts Commissioning Editor, Kitty Rosinski, has seen the show and she's with me now. Kitty, a lot's been said about the casting of Anne Boleyn, but the most important question about any drama is, is it any good? Yeah, I think it's a really interesting twist on a story that we have seen so many times before. I mean, you know, the story of Anne Boleyn and Henry VIII has been told so many times on TV and on film, but this does feel like um, something different. It's Anne's final months told very much from Anne's perspective, as opposed to being told through the eyes of Henry and his advisor, Thomas Cromwell, like we've seen previously in things like Wolf Hall. And the producers of the show have described it as almost like a psychological thriller, which when you first hear that, you think, okay, how are they going to make a period drama that's a psychological thriller? They seem like two very distinct genres that wouldn't necessarily marry together particularly well. But then when you think about what actually happened to Anne, which is that, you know, her husband decided that he didn't want to be married to her anymore and then you know went about finding ways to essentially get rid of her it's actually you know there is the material for that kind of psychological intrigue there and I do think that the two genres do actually work together really well. So what's dominated the conversation about this series though is that they hired a black actor to play Anne Boleyn. Now, the producers say that that shows how people were othered in the Tudor court. Does that work as a kind of dramatic device? Does she feel like she's been othered? Yeah, I, I think it does. It's definitely a, a different way of portraying, as you say, that aspect of how Anne was othered. And um, yeah, Jodie Tennant-Smith is a, is a brilliant performer. And I think um, she gives a really uh, nuanced and layered performance, which really adds to that depiction of Anne being um, othered in the court. And I also, I'd guess from a producer's perspective, it must be a way of finding somebody who can say something new about Anne Boleyn, because we've had so many different portrayals of her over the years, haven't we? Yeah, definitely. I mean, there have, as you say, been so, so many cultural depictions of Anne. I mean, it seems almost like a a cottage industry of them for uh, film and TV and and also theatre as well. I mean, you know, you have Six the Musical has been such a hit in the West End. Um, You have Wolf Hall, which was such a successful... um, BBC period drama, the adaptation of the Hilary Mantle novel. So yeah, I think what is really striking about this version is that it really centres the storytelling through um, Anne's perspective. If you think back to some of the other previous depictions of, of Anne Boleyn's story, it's very much been from almost through the perspective of the king and the court where she's been, you know, this kind of temptress who came in and then um, she's been depicted as this kind of notorious woman but this is very much unpicking what it would actually feel like for that woman to be so isolated in this position where she can see her power um, and her position with the king sort of slipping away from her almost. She's in this horrible situation where she's you know had pregnancy loss, stillbirth 
and the emotional impact of that really comes across in the series. And you've spoken to the actor Mark Stanley, who's playing Henry VIII. What's he been saying about this colourblind casting? He was very much of, of the opinion that this is absolutely the way that the period drama should be going, you know, adopting this more identity-conscious casting approach. Um, he mentioned that in theatre, for example, um, casting directors have just been going off who is the best suited for the role, who can best embody that character in a way that's convincing for the audience. So why shouldn't TV casting directors, and especially in, in, in period dramas, um, why shouldn't they be adopting a similar approach too? And there have been some successes with colourblind casting, haven't there, recently? There's um, Amanda Anucci's version of David Copperfield, had Dev Patel in the lead role there. Bridgerton was an enormous success for Netflix with a black Queen Charlotte. Slightly different because there is some evidence that Queen Charlotte may have been black, actually, in, in, in real life. But it does appear to show that audiences don't really care about the colour of a cast skin. Definitely. Um, I should note that the producers for Anne Boleyn, um, they've said that it's not necessarily a colourblind approach that they've used for casting in this instance because sometimes the, the concept of colourblind can imply the idea of not seeing race, which can you know, potentially be quite problematic and risks you know, negating or ignoring a huge part of someone's experience. So instead, they've used um, what they've called an identity-conscious approach, um, which they feel you know, better takes into account um, and reflects different aspects of a performer's identity. So, for example, when they're thinking about Jodie Turner-Smith as a potential and um, they were thinking oh well she's um, recently become a new mother she'd probably have a really interesting insight and perspective on how Anne was feeling in those months but um, yeah I think the audiences are really um, accepting of colorblind and color conscious approaches to casting I think you know when you watch a film or a piece of theater or a tv show you do kind of suspend your disbelief and you get drawn into the story and into the amazing performances. Um, and I think that happens in this. I think that happens in, as you mentioned, David Copperfield, where Deb Patel is brilliant at portraying the lead character. And um, in Bridgerton too. And I imagine that these success stories are only going to make this approach to casting um, more popular in the industry. So I think the last time I was kind of watching Anne Boleyn's story was probably in the Tudors with Jonathan Rhys Myers as Henry VIII and Natalie Dormer, who went on to Game of Thrones. She was Anne Boleyn. Is this series anything like that? Is it all about the, the sex and shenanigans of the Tudor court? Um, I would say it's pretty different in tone to the kind of bodice ripper vibe of, of the Tudors on, which was on a few years ago. Um, the fact that it is framed through this um, psychological thriller prism means that it's much more amping up the tension almost. Um, you really get this sense of Anne as being quite isolated. There's some quite interesting camera work to kind of try and exaggerate that yeah I'd say it's not like any period dramas that we've seen especially ones like in the Tudor period um, before just because um, yeah it really kind of takes a completely non-traditional approach to a genre that's often quite straightforward quite traditional and quite staid Anne Boleyn's on Channel 5 at 9pm and the three-part series will also be available on the My5 streaming service. That's the leader. We're back tomorrow at 4pm.